I'm going to just come by and just say hello. Um, you know, I, I've been kind of coming back uh, uh, to San Francisco um, and uh, reading a lot more about uh, things I've done and, 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 and so on. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see uh, even the Bay Guardian, uh, Tim Rettman, uh, being uh, somewhat kind by saying that, well, maybe some of the uh, past uh, things I've done is sort of more a ancient history and, and, and what have you. And I want to kind of talk a little bit about that and kind of put some perspective on that and, and uh, what exactly, as mayor, I'm you know, going to do. And, and given more recent track record, you know, what I have done. Uh, I uh, came to this uh, city uh, when I was three years old, 1953. And I know that all of you uh, don't know anything about that because you are too young. Uh, <laughs> but I'm old enough. No, I'm older than you. Okay, Rick. Um, and back in those days, uh, I lived with my mother and my sister in a one-room apartment in an SRO. And that's sort of my life. And one of the things that I realized uh, when we were living in there was that we just couldn't get out. You know, back in those days, you could not go out to the Richmond and try to rent a place to live there. You just couldn't do that. There was prohibition about any individual who's Chinese to live out there, let alone even thinking about buying a piece of property. Back in those days, there was not a second Chinatown, there was not a third Chinatown, there was not a fourth Chinatown. Chinatown was in Chinatown, and that was pretty much it. And as I started to look at that a little bit more, you know, unfortunately, California and San Francisco has been not too kind uh, to a lot of Chinese. Uh, there were laws that were written and passed by the San Francisco Board of Supervisors that said, you know, if you're Chinese, uh, just give us your labor, but as soon as we get your labor, you know, you better get out of here. And so those are the histories that a lot of the people that I grew up with and people in my community felt. Uh, there were laws that uh, said that, you know, if you ran a laundry, that's great. But if you happen to go and put a stick to carry that laundry, that's prohibited. And that was targeted to Chinese because we we're doing well. And so you can kind of imagine, as I was growing up, my life experience was one of, you know, you better take care of yourself because City Hall is not going to take care of you. And God knows the uh, state of California is not going to take care of you because they have the Chinese Exclusion Act. And so those are the experiences that I have, and so as a result, a lot of, uh, you know, individuals, just regular individuals, decided that if I'm going to be able to live in San Francisco, if I'm going to be able to stay in San Francisco, you know, I better go and buy a piece of property. And if I am fortunate enough to then own, uh, you know, maybe one or two units, then maybe I can at least uh, earn a living and at least be here in San Francisco. So a lot of mom and pops decided that they were going to go ahead and uh, do that. And so that's sort of my history uh, in terms of tenants and landlords and, 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 and so on. And so when I left San Francisco and went to uh, Sacramento representing you in the Assembly and in the Senate, what I also realized was that I was living in a city where it was predominantly tenants and that they were really at the state level pretty much isolated. There's not a whole lot of um, support uh, for tenants. There are not a whole lot of protection uh, for tenants. And over the years uh, in my tenure in the state legislature, there were a number of bills that just simply provided additional protection towards tenants. And I supported those bills. Uh, if you look at my record, um, Tenants Together and Housing California, you know, we've been pretty close in terms of supporting their agenda and their issues and the things that they care about. And so when uh, recently uh, there was a major, major issue uh, that dealt with uh, inclusionary housing and so on, I supported the Mark Leno bill. Uh, that was a bill that I thought maybe a year ago I would author and so on. Uh, a lot of individuals uh, in the tenants movement in Sacramento said, no, this is not the time. We've got to wait a little bit. And so we waited. Um, you know, uh, uh, Senator Leno picked up uh, that particular uh, issue and uh, unfortunately the votes were just not there. My understanding is that he's going to bring it up back in January and hopefully we're going to be able to uh, get the uh, bills, uh, uh, get that particular bill through. So with that said, uh, you know, well, what, you know, where do I stand on tenant issue? Let me just say that I'm absolutely supportive of uh, tenants protection. 
um, uh, I am uh, supportive uh, of, of uh, rent control 100% and, and supportive uh, of uh, doing whatever we can to ensure that affordability, not supportive of mean testing. Uh, I think that the affordable housing bond that I've supported over the years is extremely in, in, important uh, for the city to maintain its rolling stock of affordable housing units and so on, but I think we've got to be a little bit more imaginative and creative as to how do we sustain that funding mechanism over the years, and that's something that I'm very, very committed to doing. If you look at the, how the libraries have been uh, rather uh, uh, proficient in the development and retrofit and building new uh, um, uh, libraries and so on, I think that's a model that I want to look at very, very closely and emulate and try to at least ensure that there is ongoing funding for that. And then as mayor, uh, while there, the Leno bill did not pass, you know, I am committed that if you are going to build in San Francisco, we've got to work out that issue of how to increase the inclusionary or, or, or increase that affordability and inclusionary housing is part of that overall scheme as to how we're going to be able to in, uh, 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 sustain the affordability uh, within the San Francisco. You know, ultimately, where I stand is that I came to this city without a penny. My mother, unfortunately, didn't have a whole lot of skills and so on. Uh, and so, with that said, this city has allowed me to grow here. It has allowed me to earn a living. It's allowed me to uh, grow, my, uh, uh, raise my kids, grow my family. And I want to ensure that other individuals will have that same opportunity that I have. While there are individuals here uh, who have a lot of resources and so on, there are a lot of other individuals who don't. And we ought not to cut that uh, um, series of assistance and, and, and help to any individual wanting to come here, start a life, and be able to then grow into a, a community here. And so that's what I am committed to doing that as mayor. I will continue to fight uh, for tenants and for that affordability uh, that is absolutely critical in terms of my platform, my agenda, my administration. So, again, you know, I want to thank you for the time that you've given me. Uh, I'm sure that there will be many, many more opportunities and other forums where we're going to talk about a whole host of issues, but I at least wanted to come by and share with you some of my thoughts I have uh, relative to tenant issues and, and, and so on. Um, you know, I've got to run, but I'll be more happy to take one question, Tommy. and then we will um, <laughs> say, Tommy, do that, okay? Okay, so a little setup for the question. Um, and, and it, it, you know, we've been hearing a lot tonight about the whole issue of affordable housing and, and how we get more affordable housing in San Francisco, but let's look at the facts. Right now, we have all this building going on, but developers are opting out. They're doing in lieu of fees. And the city has no choice but to let them do that. So we're, we're losing inclusionary units. Mark and Octavia, they've opted out. 55 Laguna, the developer wants to opt out of the, the 49 inclusionary units. And, and this, this is a pattern. I know Leno's bill is trying to fix that, but in the meantime, we're faced with a situation where virtually we're losing all of this inclusionary housing. So. We've got that going on. Then we've got the situation with our rent control stock, which is being eroded by TICs and condo conversions and attempts by the TIC folks to, you know, to opt the condo conversion <coughs> limits so that they can sneak in all these TICs. And even though that's been squashed in the moment, the reality is that's going to keep coming back. So we've got that going on. Um, and I think, I think uh, you know, when it comes to the rent control stock, while we think that that is so great, it's so wonderful, it is wonderful for people who are living in the rent control unit. Once you move out, it goes up to market. So the reality is, if we're talking about the way to get a lot of affordable housing immediately would be to extend rent control to every unit in San Francisco. And we can't do that unless we get rid of Costa Hawkins. And, you know, you, 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 you're on the state level there. So I'm looking at, if you're mayor, you know, would you be willing to, to number one, lobby to get rid of Costa Hawkins? Would you be willing to, to tackle the whole issue of the TICs and the erosion of rent control to TICs and condo conversions? And would you be willing to look at ways that we can get these developers to, to do inclusionary housing, even if we don't get the state law eventually passed? You know, is the, would you look at a way that we hold these people accountable because they're making millions of goddamn dollars and they're giving us nothing. <laughs> Woo! I, I, I think that one 
question in three parts. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, you know, let me uh, just... <laughs> Number one, I think that um, you know my position is that the 200 limit on the Connell's burn, I'm fine with. You know, I don't think that we can further erode the affordable housing side. So, so you would oppose any attempt by TIC right. people That's to right. slip in? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I know that there are other proposals that are out there. You know, I'm more than willing to talk about those proposals, but if at the end of the day there's nothing there for tenants and maintaining that affordability, I'm not there. All right. So that's number one. I think number two is that we've got to look at, you know, some of our bonding capacity and figure out how we then take control of, 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 of some of that bonding capacity and then allow us to then go out there and um, uh, you know, develop a more sustainable funding stream for affordable housing needs. All right, so I think that's what we do. I think the other is that one of the things, because of the lawsuit in Los Angeles, it has really crippled our ability to kind of push that agenda. Uh -huh. And I think that it's going to be dependent on whether or not you've got an individual in room 200 that's willing to push that envelope. And all that I would say is the following. When I was on the Board of Supervisors and UC San Francisco decided that they were not going to abide by ensuring a living wage for individuals, everybody threw up their hand and said, what in the world are we going to do? They are a state agency, they're going to get away with it and so on. I found a way. I found a way to ensure that we would in fact get union workers in that particular facility. Just as I did that with UC San Francisco, we're going to go and find ways to work with these developers to ensure that they are going to attend to some of our needs. If you're going to come into San Francisco, you're going to have to help with a larger agenda, and that larger agenda is maintaining that affordability. So I'm going to hold their feet to the fire. You know, there are a number of things that we can, in fact, do. I don't want to kind of put that all out there, but you can, and you know that. You can do that. You have done that. Uh, and, and, and it's important that we do that because if we don't, then San Francisco is going to be ending up a place where the richest of rich and the poorest of poor are just going to be pushed out. So, but again, you know, let me just thank you for uh, just giving me the opportunity. I'm sure that there have been many, many other forums and, and, and so on, and I want to continue to work with you guys on all of these things. Thank you. Thank you.